Chelsea Rittenauer and I'm your host for Music Talks. Tonight we are at the Geyer Theatre in Scottsdale and I'm going to be chatting with the cast and crew of their upcoming production of Footloose, which is happening this September. Come on! All right, everybody, I am here with the two co-directors of the upcoming production of Footloose at the Geyer Theater. We have Rachel and David. Hey, guys. Hey. Thank you. Thank you so very much for chatting with me today. So why Footloose? Footloose is, it's, it's such a fun story, and it is uh, a musical that is... Uh, it's a big name that people love. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to bring it back to the Geyer stage for that reason. It's been a long time since we've done it. And it's a story that we enjoy telling over and over again. Plus everyone loves singing along with the music. Yeah, everybody knows this music. I mean, this show, it was pretty interesting in the 80s. I mean, this has happened since then, but a lot of the songs from the show crossed over into pop radio. Am mm -hmm. I correct? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, so like people really know this music. Yes. Yeah, which is a lot, a lot of fun. Yes. Now, we were discussing prior to the camera rolling how I know my issue with this show has been it's very 80s, right? And that was always one of the things that I personally was never a fan of. Are you guys taking a different spin on it? Are you, have you made it more modern or are you keeping it true to the 80s roots? So we are keeping it true to the 80s roots, but we're focusing more on the story. So we want it to be a like a song and dance spectacle, but we yeah. don't want to like, you know, capitalize on neon and gotcha. all of the 80s yes. stuff. It, you'll see it, but we're actually kind of keeping things kind of tame until the end um, just because we want to help show like how depressed Beaumont is and yeah. how one person coming in and infiltrating their town kind of like impacts and sets a snowball effect mm -hmm. and um, then gradually color starts to creep in. Well, it's very much a, uh, a redemption story for both the main uh, male character and for the entire town, which I think yes. kind of gets overshadowed by the 80s music, <laughs> yes. right? And that's, we both agreed on that, that we wanted <laughs> people bypass the story all of the time and yeah. uh, we don't want that to happen right. in our show. It's actually, it's really touching the story and it gets pretty dramatic at the end, especially if it's delivered in the correct way, which yes. I know everyone involved in the production <laughs> will. Um, how's everything going with the actual rehearsals in the production? Where are you guys at? Well, we've been rehearsing for a few weeks already, and we've uh, made great progress. And we've got, uh, I think, uh, walked away from the first few rehearsals, Rachel and I being a little overwhelmed by the <laughs> talent of the cast. So, yeah. uh, so I think it's going to be a fantastic show, and we're uh, every day more and more reassured by the decisions that we made putting people in roles. And uh, it's uh, we're, we're very excited for this. This is going to be a, a powerhouse show. It for is. sure. I yes. can already tell. So, And, uh, you know, it's full of um, energy and yes. it's, it's very much something that is contagious and the cast brings it every night. So we are feeding off of it. So I, when that comes to the stage, I know the audience is going to love it as well. Oh, yeah. Now, before we wrap this up, this section, um, I know they're not here, but who is uh, the music director and who is the choreographer for this production? Well, I can tell you, the music director is Hazel Braun, and she is from the Del Monte area. I know and, Hazel. Uh, I haven't seen her in years, but I know Hazel. Yep, and we are very, Hazel. very happy and, and oh, lucky she's to fantastic. get her. Absolutely. She's oh. wonderful. This is my first time working with her, and I'm like, yep, she's, she's just the one we need. She's amazing. <laughs> yes, awesome. she is. I, we love her. Yeah. Um, our choreographer is Alex Wilson. She is from Uniontown. Mm -hmm. uh, she is a Summer at the State alum, so she's been on stage most summers up there, and her and her husband actually do Union Uniontown High School's musicals. Nice. So, um, and she teaches dance at a couple performing arts schools, and so she's she's been wonderful. Like we really pushed her to her limits last week. <laughs> <laughs> she's great. Like I said, powerhouse musical, for sure. All right, guys, thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you. Yeah. So. We were just sitting here discussing all of our tattoos, but um, I'm here chatting with uh, Aubrey Birchall. Hello. Hi. We have a lot to talk about, and, I, and I've got to keep it short and sweet, but first, let's talk 
Rusty, so what prompted you to come out and audition for the show? I don't know. There was just something about it that was like enticing me to go do it. I was like, okay, I have audition anxiety really bad, but I feel like this is like my shot at, at like doing a musical that is like the older pop music yeah. that like I love and yeah. like love to sing and stuff. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go do it. And so I did, and I'm so glad I did. Yeah. And yeah. now you are <laughs> cast as... Rusty. Rusty is such a good character. Um, I agree. <laughs> I, talk to me about this character and, and what you're doing with it. Right. So uh, I think Rusty is going to be definitely like a really interesting character to play because she's like this spitfire that's almost uh, diminished and held back by this town. She's just ready to to show the world this this colorful personality. And she is almost seen as too much for everybody. She's oh, she talks way too fast. This kind of sounds like my life. I'm sure yours I know, too. Honestly, right? like, so like <laughs> she is me. Yeah. So you know, I d definitely don't think she's going to be a difficult character for me to play because I, she definitely is an extension of me. Yeah. Um. And yeah, I'm excited to really be able to like, you know, as mentioned before, like piece in the, that colorful personality, and by the end, she'll just be a shining star. So yes. <laughs> Love I'm it. really excited. Love it. So let's talk um, the music a little bit. So her main song, she sings multiple things throughout the mm. show, but her main song is Let's Hear It For The Boy. And right. um, I've, had, I've, I've worked on that piece with some of my own students um, whenever Connorsville High School did it. Then you know. Oh, it's, it's, a, <laughs> it's a big sing. Definitely, and that is the first thing I thought when I started learning the, the music. I was like, oh my god, I'm really going to be pushed to my vocal limits. Yes. Um, I mean, I, listen, I know you're, oh, I, I was about to curse. I know you're a amazing <laughs> singer, um, you know, and I know a bit of your story, and you, you truly are like that powerhouse felt type of voice. Um, but I also know how difficult that right. song is. So it's, it's like, ridiculous. Yeah, and it's not even just that song. It's like throughout the entire movie. The entire She's show. Like ready to go. She's like singing in that, that same like up here. That high power. High. Yeah. Yeah. So I know. it's honestly like that's something like in my like young teen and adulthood that was like a very underdeveloped and misunderstood part of my voice. Yes. So to finally be able to like have made myself and forced myself to audition for a role that I would have been uncomfortable with when I was 15. Oh, yeah. It's just I don't think huge. any 15-year-old should be singing this role. True. I, I, I don't really think, <laughs> and it's just my humble opinion, but I really don't think anyone should be touching the role of Rusty until they're at least in their mid-20s because mm. of how vocally demanding it is. Right, and you need to know your stuff. You have to know your technique. You're going to hurt yourself. You are. Yeah. Yes. And, um, you know, a little shout out. Keith Harker. I know. Yeah, he's, he's amazing. Yeah. Really? You know? Yeah, I know him. Okay. That's yeah. awesome. Yes. Um, and he has taught me everything I know about yeah. the anatomy of the voice. Yes. That's how I, so him and I, that's how I teach as well. Him and I okay. kind of teach one and the same. She's, okay. Yes. We both went to yes. Pitt for all that stuff. Like, yes. yes. He's, he's the man. He's awesome. Check him out. Amen. Yeah. Yes. But, um, no, I, I like, talking shop like this with people Absolutely. but it, it's it's true you have to know your technique to sing this role it's, yeah I definitely oh. agree and I've been singing um since I was like 11 or 12 it's yeah. been a good solid decade yeah. and that this is still like I have to really sit down with it and commit it to muscle memory and you know you've got to really make sure that that is right where it belongs yeah because musical theater singing musical theater is a little different than singing pop and I, I think you can agree with that and yeah. I know you sing a ton of pop music I um, mean, mm -hmm. I do too nowadays. And when right. someone wants me to sing musical theater, I'm like, oh, hold up. Let me Yeah, let you, me gotta, you really got to, it's like shifting gears. Oh, yeah. But I'm definitely really grateful for the knowledge of musical theater and more legit singing because I use that yes. for my pop singing. Have to. Because in my humble opinion, I feel that musical theater singing is like th the basis of what you should start with, basically. Yeah, yeah. Is 
is that that placement that's right mm -hmm. up here, right through here, because that's going to help that the soil that mix. you do. Yeah, and then you can add the spice. You can lift oh. your soft palate. You can round, round that sound add out. Add depth. Add yeah. color. Add yeah. Exactly. I we're nerding you. out. Sorry, we're it's really fine. nerding out. Yes. Ooh, singer, <laughs> singer, speak. I'm yes. sorry, everybody. Okay. <clears throat> um, really quickly, and then I want to get to AGT. Um, mm -hmm. So I know you've done tons of pop. Um, we have a mutual friend, Greg. I know you did his, um, oh yeah, I grew up with Greg. Oh, cool. Um, I know you did his production, his, of Calgary. was that the first time that you did like a, a legitimate musical? In my adulthood, that is my first role, uh -huh. um, that I, um, definitely consider to be something I put on my resume. resume. So, um, you know, Greg had asked me, I hadn't really been like, I literally, my last musical was White Christmas, and I was 15, and, and I was in the quartet. Yeah. And that was awesome. I loved it. But um, I, he was like, oh, my gosh, like, you don't have a resume, but I, here you go. <laughs> and I was like, ah! Yeah. And I well, because people know your voice, and people know your talent, and if you can sing it, you can sing it. And I'm so <laughs> grateful because um, that was my acting debut. Yeah. I was what I call it, really, and... Um, you know, that's not something that is first nature to me because I haven't had any official acting classes and, mm -hmm. um, it, it's just really interesting to be able to like create a character basically. Like yeah. there's nothing to base anything off of. Like Sadie Corman was like mine and I got to do what I was going to do with her. Right. And, um, it was, oh my gosh, like it definitely lit the fire. Um, for and now me. you're here. Yep. And now I'm here. You and got it the is bug. basically the reason I'm here. You got so. the bug. Yeah. Love it. So AGT, America's Got Talent. Um, if, if you know, which I, you should know, I think everybody around here knows. Um, <laughs> so she was just on America's Got Talent and you can look that up and she's singing uh, her heart and soul out and she sounds fantastic. Um, all right, really quickly, how, how did that happen? Um, ironically enough, uh, there's this really kind woman by the name of Courtney Harrell, and she had been trying to get me on the show for uh -huh. three years straight, and it just wasn't happening for us. Yeah. Um, you know, like I have a bad habit of like not being myself, and um, I was like, she was like, hey, you know, just to let you know, I know you've been through a lot like the past couple of years, but AGT is still here, so if you want to do it again, just let me know. And I was like, okay, Courtney. Let's do it again. Sure. Um, and this was the time. This was the time that, you know, um, and these are her words. She said they were turning away a lot of singers, like a lot of, a lot of, a lot of singers. And she said that I got a resounding yes. And um, the producer sent me through and I um, was lucky enough to be an early release audition. Nice. Um, it's been an overwhelmingly positive experience. Um, so pretty much, yeah, I was, I was asked to be on the show. Um, and honestly, like, I, I would really like to, like, for, like, all our local artists, you know, that I'm sure, like, watch this, mm -hmm. um, you know, the video she picked up, like, for, like, this last time was a video of me on the bathroom floor at Target. No intentions of it going anywhere, singing Jolene I mean, I, by Ray Montaigne. I think that's so. the best stuff, though. Yeah. But <laughs> just put yourself out there. Yeah. It's like, at the end, I don't, I don't care how you're feeling, feel it and Put it towards what you love to do because it really is worth it at the end of the day to um, just create yeah. and you never know where that's going to lead you. Because yeah. I, last year around this time, I would have never thought I would be in this position. I would have never thought I'd be on a stage like that. Yeah. Um, I would have never thought that I would be in the top 55 on one of the most popular shows on American television. Um, Seriously, if you and, haven't seen it, just hop on to YouTube anywhere. Look it up. <laughs> it, it's uh, it's worth a watch and a listen. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> so now you'll be moving on with that yes, show. I know you can't so. talk about a lot, but you'll be moving on and we'll be seeing yes. more of you. And I will need people to vote. Please tell your vote. friends. Vote. Please. Love Let's it. Uh, get a Pittsburgh girl to the finale. Yes. Please. But until then... <laughs> Come see her in person. In Footloose. In Footloose. In like your hometown area. Yeah. How amazing is that? Amazing. And Footloose is actually after live shows. <laughs> yeah. Right. Minor details, but. Yeah. Um, but I can like mention um, September 6th. That is my performance date. Okay. So 
uh, be watching out for that. And then September 22nd through the 25th, come on over and see me as Rusty. Perfect. And see this amazing cast because I am already excited. I'm Literally w- two weeks in, and I am like, oh my gosh, I'm going. This is gonna break. This show's gonna break my heart. As soon as I'm like literally already afraid of it being over. So that's a good sign. That is a good sign. <laughs> awesome. Well, yes. thank you for chatting with me. Thank it you was for fun. Me. I, yes. I enjoyed nerding out with yeah. you. Yeah. So. That's like my favorite thing to do. Yes. Ever, so. Yeah, me too. I'm yeah. sure we'll talk soon. So. Oh, yeah, definitely. All right. Definitely. Well, thank so. you. That's Aubrey, thank you. everyone. Nice to meet you. <laughs> All right, I am here chatting with Madeline Struhar, who is playing the role of Ariel. That's me. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's jump into it. Um, I don't know you. Give me your background. So um, I actually started um, doing theater after, I, I did a lot of theater in high school. And once I graduated, I really wanted to start to pursue acting. So I was taking a lot of acting classes, doing a lot of film work, and um, I still found that I had that passion for theater that I did in high school. So I decided to just audition for a couple of different community theaters, and I've done a couple of shows since then. This is my second show at the Geyer, though, so I'm new to this area. Cool. So... Footloose, why Why did you want to audition for the show? I have been a huge fan of 80s movies since I was a kid. Mm-hmm. I used to want to get like a sleeve of 80s movies inspired tattoos. Do it. <laughs> I still should, honestly. I have no tattoos, so. But um, I, I watched Footloose. That was one of the first shows I had seen. And I absolutely fell in love with Ariel and even the remake of Footloose. Mm-hmm. I absolutely loved and I always thought, of, no way I could play Ariel. And that was actually this perfect segue. That was my next question. <laughs> so, were you specifically going for the role of Ariel? I was. I was. And I you got it. We're here. I am ecstatic. I can't, I still can't believe it. Whenever I got the email, like it popped up, and I was like, no way. Like, really? <laughs> so. so, I think one of the most iconic songs, um, aside from like, let's hear it for the boy, would be. Almost Paradise, mm. right? Because that was like one of the songs that crossed over into pop charts and it was like that big like love power ballad type deal, you know? Yeah. Which is also, a, it's a it's a pretty big thing as well. Yes. So like, since I geeked out with Aubrey, let, let's talk shop. How are you feeling about this role from a, like a, a music standpoint? So at first I was really nervous because I have just recently been trying to make mixing with my chest voice and my head voice okay. come out and sound pretty. Yeah. And I was actually really confident whenever I was auditioning that I was doing it correctly. Mm-hmm. And the more I practice, the more confident I'm getting. Because before I wouldn't sing in my head voice like at all mm-hmm. in front of anyone. Mm-hmm. And now during rehearsals, like I'm letting myself open up more and try to. Yeah. So this role, um, you're definitely I don't want to say experimenting, but you're you're trying new vocal colors and things like that. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it's kind of like the same as, as what Aubrey said, like pushing yourself to your limits. Vocally, um, yes. Yeah. More so, I think, dancing. Okay, okay. <laughs> Got it. No, yeah, she did. Ariel does do a lot of dancing, huh? Oh, she does. Yeah. <laughs> oh, she does. Um, do you have a dance background? I have very little ballet. Okay. That's about it. I did... Like I said, the theater, the high school shows, and um, show choir, uh, drill team when I was in high school, which is like the dance team. Yeah. And that's about it. So no formal dance training. How's it going? I don't think it's going bad. All right. Yeah. So I'm, I'm very optimistic about it. Um, it's very challenging, but it's very exciting to see myself move I how I did it think about- I could. The boots. The boots. Because, all right, I mean, if you know, you know that Ariel wears these red cowboy boots. Iconic. It's iconic. It is. We love it. Um, do we have the boots yet? Because you have yet. to you have to dance and move in them. Yes. Which is very different than being in like jazz shoes or something like yes. that. Yes. Um, I am on I'm gonna get them. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I need to get on that. But um I have a couple pairs picked out. I went over with Rachel. I was like, hey, do these look cool? We found a couple different pairs. There was these really pretty embroidered ones, but we want to keep it classic. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Um, 
let's talk about this character from an acting perspective. Because you said you you did film work. Mm -hmm. um, so would you say acting is more of your wheelhouse then? So you're more, I wouldn't say, you're just more comfortable with it. Yeah, absolutely. This character is cool because she puts on this front of trying to be rebellious. And, mm. But I, I don't know. My interpretation is, is she really that? I don't know. I think she's just struggling and misunderstood. So what's your take on this character? I agree. It Ariel is more, she wants to be rebellious and she wants to rebel against her father, of course. But I think she struggles with the loss of her brother. Yeah. She never fully was able to cope with it. Um, we talk about in the characters talk in the script how she, her dad basically just forgot about her brother. Like he doesn't, he, he doesn't talk about it. Right. There's nothing said. Exactly. He realized that he wanted to make the town a better place and that's what he went to. And I think that was his way of coping, but he didn't realize what it did for his family. Right. It didn't give them anything to try and move on. So now she's rebelling more so against her father for not helping her cope with the loss of her brother. Yeah. But there's so much depth that goes into each of the characters. Yes. And it's really awesome how uh, you just see everyone starting to come to life and be their character. Mm -hmm. And you can see why each person was cast as who they were, because they are that definition of that character. Would you say you are a little bit like Ariel? Or maybe whenever you were younger? I don't know. I mean, do, do you feel connected to the character? I do. Yeah. <laughs> when I was a teenager, I was definitely a rebellious teenager. I was into all the pop punk and nose ring, wearing my hood up, headphones in, walking down the hallways in school. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I do resonate a lot with her wanting to be her own person and not really feeling like she can express that yeah. until she meets her person that finally gives her the go ahead. Yeah. To... A rebel meets another rebel. Exactly. And then they just kind of mellow each other out. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's great. <laughs> I love it. Very well, excited. Thank you very much. And we look forward to seeing you on the stage. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So I am here with Robin and Joshua Brady. And no, that is not a mistake. This is a family affair within this show. Why don't you two tell me the characters that you play? I am playing um, the role of Vi Moore. And I'll be playing uh, Ren McCormick. Okay, who exactly are these characters within the show? For those that aren't familiar with the production. Um, Vi is the preacher's wife mm -hmm. um, in a town that church is a very big component of their life and those um, the beliefs of the church. Um, it's kind of an interesting story. Uh, not just the music. Yes, there's great music in the show, yeah. but again, it's that human component um, that really is what drives the show along and change. Um, a lot of things I read talk about the, how the town's full of survivors from an, an incident that happened, and survival's a great thing, and it's a great place to be at some point, mm -hmm. but you have to move on for it from mm -hmm. that point um, to grow, and it's kind of like the town forgot how to live um, and is just living in that survival mode. Yeah. So it's um, a story of living again. Yeah. And <clears throat> before the camera was rolling, we were having conversation about how I personally think your character is so important, especially at the end, because you really are the person that puts your foot down and um, gets your husband to change his mind and see things in a different light. Mm -hmm. Which, fun facts, your husband in real life is My her husband. husband on the stage. Yes. So like I said, it is it is a family affair. Now I was told that you two have been in a lot of productions together, but this is the first time that you're actually playing a couple. Correct. On stage. Yeah, we actually met um, in grad school for acting and oh, cool. um, had took a little detour, had three kids, middle one over here. Um, and we kind of now that our kids are older, we're getting back into it over the past few years and loving it. And even more than just, you know, getting to do it again, getting to share it with them as well. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. I, I love that. So <laughs> let's talk about your character a little bit. You're the main dude. Ren. Yeah, he's yeah. a little important. Uh, yeah, you know. <laughs> uh, Ren, uh, he's a new guy in town. He moved from Chicago um, and is having trouble adjusting kind of the, to the small town um, kind of vibe that Be Beaumont gives. He gets portrayed like he's this sort of like bad boy type of character. I really don't think that's what he no, is. No, not at but, all. But he absolutely gets 
portrayed that way. And I feel like within the town, he's really dealt um, a rough hand. Absolutely. He's just having a hard time with um, his father left him and having to move away from all his friends. And now his only outlet was dancing. And now he's moving to a town where he's told that's outlawed. You're not allowed to dance. So he has no outlet for all this emotion he has built up. And um, like you were saying earlier, you were talking about how he's misunderstood. And that makes it worse for him because they see him as kind of a um, bad bad boy or um, coming from like the big city, trying to rebel. But really, yeah. he's just living, being himself. And with them treating him like that, it just makes him feel more of an outcast and even worse overall. And it just makes the situation worse. Um, let's talk music, since I've done it with everybody else. Mm-hmm. So Ren's a big sing, like every other character in this show. Mm-hmm. What is your background as far as all of that is concerned? Um, in school, I, um, did choir for six years, no, seven years, actually, about, um, doing school choir, um, chamber, um, honors choir. I went a few years of, cool. um, and also just taking voice lessons from different teachers throughout the years. And I've done, this will be, I think my 12th show at the Geyer, and I don't even know how many shows overall, oh, like wow. the school shows and everything, but it's been a lot of shows, a lot of singing, dancing. Yeah. So you've been doing this basically for yeah, forever. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you know what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Love it. Let's talk you. All right. So you said you were in grad school for acting. Mm-hmm. What is, do you have a musical background? I actually started a few decades ago as a, a kid performing uh, in shows, musicals, mostly dancing, all that good stuff. Um, so I did, I do have vocal training and dance yeah. training. Um, when I was in high school, I studied under an amazing, uh, musical theater voice teacher, and she actually was directing our town in high school, mm-hmm. um, which I fell in love with. And I was cast, um, as Emily, the lead in that show. And ever since then, it's like acting kind of did this little switch around on me mm-hmm. and acting is like my main passion, my main love. Um, yeah. and that's kind of where my heart lies. However, even as a performing professional actor, actress um, in theater, a lot of times musical theater is where there is more work. So yeah. um, I do enjoy, I love musical theater, don't get me wrong, um, which is kind of like why I enjoy Vi at first, I'm not going to lie. I was not thrilled with the part, you know, because at first glance, when you see it, sometimes it's just like, oh, she's one of the parents. She's a little boring. Um, but when you really start to think about the history, what she's been through, what the town's been through, mm-hmm. and the growth that um, happens throughout the show, it's it's pretty amazing. And um, it, it's yeah. it's it's a it's a transformation um, that I think a lot of people, especially parents. Um, can relate to. Well, great. I enjoyed chatting with you guys. Is there anything that you'd like to add about the characters or about the show in general? Um, I just think it's going to be amazing. There's a ton of powerhouse voices yeah, in this show, yeah. a ton. Yeah. Um, and get your tickets because I think it's it's going to sell really well. I think mm-hmm. so too. All right. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you too. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Well, everyone, if I do say so myself, I think this is going to be a fantastic production. Be sure to get your tickets. I think they're going to sell fast and we'll see you next time. That's a wrap.